Here's another one of my favorite topics, exponents. Uh, so we're going to go through these properties of exponents that we should already know from 0308, and we're reinforcing 0310. In number one, you are multiplying and you have the same base, which is x. Remember that when you multiply and you have the same base, all you need to do is add the exponents. Basically, you're adding the factors. So how many factors of x do I have? Well, you have 8 here, plus 7 more there, plus 11 here. So altogether, this is x to the 26th. When it comes to doing division, I do mine a little bit differently. Uh, you could look at it this way and know that when you are dividing, you subtract the exponents. This is the quotient rule. You take the top exponent minus the bottom one. I tend to look at it a little bit differently, and I say, where do I have more factors of x and more factors of y? If I look at just this piece right here, you see that you have more factors of x in the numerator. Well, how many more do you have in the numerator? You have five more factors of x. And what about the y's? Where do you have more factors of y? You have more factors of y in the denominator. And how many more are there? 12. If you can imagine writing out all of these factors of y, both numerator and denominator, and you start reducing them, you'll find out that you run out in the numerator when you would still have 12 more factors of y left in the denominator. Now, if you were to do this using the quotient rule, this would be x to the 13 minus 8 and y to the 20 minus 32 power. So this gives you x to the fifth and y to the negative twelfth. But as you recall, we don't leave negative exponents. And so this guy would go into the denominator like this. So it still works out the same. We have something like number three. It's, it's all multiplication. All of this is connected. So nine times negative four is negative thirty-six. Then I have x to the, there's 5 and 11 factors, so that's 16 factors altogether. So negative 36 x to the 16th. In number 4, you have a power to a power. So, to recall, a power raised to a power means you will multiply those exponents. So initially we have x to the 32nd times x to the 17th. You have 8 factors of x, but you have that 4 times, so that's 32 factors of x. So 32 factors of x and 17 factors of x is x to the 49th. I don't to wish they could all be this nice. And problem number 5, this goes back to raising a product to a power which just means you raise each of these pieces to the power. And the same thing works for if you're doing division. So here you can see this as x to the ninth to the third, so that's x to the 27th. Then you have a to the 12th and c to the 33rd. You don't have any negative exponents, so this guy is done. Just make sure that you know your multiplication tables, that you take your time, watch your signs. It's really easy to make careless mistakes here. Now to number six. In number six, we recognize that this is just an exercise in multiplication. We've already done factoring as a review, so this should be nice and easy for us. Just distribute and be very careful. So three times eight is 24 x to the 10th and x to the 14th, you're going to add those powers. You get x to the 24th. 3 times 15 is 45. Add the powers and you get x to the 15th. 3 times negative 9 is negative 27. You have 10 factors of x. You have one more factor of x, so that is x to the 11th. Seven is a lot like number five. I mentioned this to you before. If you have a quotient to a power, you just raise each of these pieces to that power. 
So here this really means 5 to the third, which is 125. Make sure you know your powers and you work that correctly. y to the twelfth to the third. Power to a power means you multiply, so that's y to the 36th. If I look at 8, notice that on 8 you have a negative exponent. And really the easiest way to take care of this is to know that a negative exponent means you're doing the reciprocal. So I would burn the negative right here and make this to be 7 over 12 now to the positive second power. When I do that, my problem is a lot easier. I use the negative to make it the reciprocal of the inside, so 7 over 12, and then I just square each of these. So that's 49 and 144. A lot easier and faster than the alternative, which I'm not going to show you. You don't want to see it. Trust me. And number nine, this is a problem that messes up a lot of students. Notice that you don't have three pieces here. You actually have four. You have two. You've got x, the y, and the a. So you have to raise two to the fourth power. x to the negative fourth to the fourth becomes x to the negative sixteenth. This is y to the negative thirty-sixth. And a to the positive twentieth. So we have negative exponents here that need to be dealt with, so they're just going to go in the denominator. So we have x to the positive 16th, y to the positive 36th in the denominator. But you've got to work this out. You can't leave 2 to the 4th as it is. When you raise that power, you get 16. And then there's a to the 20th. Make sure that you leave your answers with positive exponents. You can have negative numbers as long as it's not an exponent. Uh, finally here, number 10. You've got a lot of weird things going on here. You have some negative exponents that you need to take care of. So this guy needs to move into the denominator. This y to the negative third needs to go to the numerator. Now when I rewrite this, watch what happens. This is still y to the 15th, a to the 11th. The positive exponents didn't move have eight, or excuse me, x to the sixth and a to the fourth. Those guys didn't move. What moved was this guy. He moves into the denominator and becomes x to the sixth. y to the negative third moves into the numerator to become y to the positive third. Everything here is still connected through multiplication just like it was in the original problem. But the reason I do it this way is because it's very easy for me to see how everything simplifies. Notice that all of your x terms are in the denominator, so that's going to give you x to the 12th. All of your y factors are in the numerator, so that's y to the 18th. But you have a in both the numerator and denominator. Just like we've seen before in this worksheet, where do you have more factors of a? I've got more factors of a in the numerator. How many more factors are there? The answer is 7. So there's your review for exponents.